Hi everyone and thank you very much for watching this video where I will discuss the need of dependency injection in Spring. So I understood this was one of the questions you were asked in a technical interview and you wanted to know uh, the correct answer or say um, the, the best answer for such a question when you get it in a technical interview, what should you say? about dependency injection in Spring, why is that needed? So first of all, to start this discussion, let's first get into why do we use Spring or why do actually why, why do we use an application framework in general and that will leverage us the need of dependency injection as well. So when you decide to use an application framework, you mostly use it because you want to get some capabilities out of the box uh, without needing to write them in your application and the need for having such a possibility came when developers observed that uh, in a lot of cases things that they do in their applications are the same for any kind of application no matter which is the business uh, logic that they need to write. Sometimes they do need to write some things which look the same, which are implemented the same way, like transaction ability, like the security implementations, the lo logging, um, and so on and so forth. So there are a lot of things that you need to write in the same way, even if it's a gaming app or it's a banking app. And you don't want to do that. You want to be able to reuse what you have. So one of the best ways to do that is to have an application framework and build your app, your business logic over an application framework that provides you all these capabilities. So that's where we get into it. Let, let me let me share you my screen actually. That that's where we get into discussing how the application framework provides you these capabilities. And the way an application framework uh, provides the capabilities today is by using um, a, a principle named inversion of control. So what is that? Is instead of having your application implement the logic, you allow something else, you allow dependency. In our case, the application framework to control your objects. So now you have some kind of a dependency. This is your dependency here. This is what you have. And you have here tons of capabilities. You, you are um, served with transaction ability. The application framework gives you security implementations you can use out of the box. It gives you logging, it gives you cloud functionalities, the way you connect and you do some kind of different things with different kinds of clouds and so on and so forth. So uh, the application framework comes with a lot of capabilities, ABC. Uh, we don't really care what they are, but we know, we know there are a lot of capabilities we use in applications. And two, implement our app we have to also have we, we have to also implement our own logic the business logic that our application uh, implements and you uh, have to uh, implement some objects basically and those objects of your application you allow the framework to control them so your objects they won't control the framework they will be controlled by the framework and how can you do that? How can you allow the framework control your object X? So this is your object. This is, this is implementing something in your application, some, some kind of business logic, something that your application needs to do. But you need to make use of certain capabilities of the framework, like the transaction ability. To allow the framework provide you the capability, you allow the framework first to control your object. So you allow the framework to control your object to add this capability to your functionality, to your code, to your, to your logic. And to do that, you need somehow a way in which you make the framework, Spring in this case, aware of your object. So you want to make the application framework aware of all your objects that need specific capabilities so that the framework can use them and can augment them with specific capabilities. 
And that's where dependency injection, well, basically that's where the spring context come into the uh, into action. So spring has a context where you place all the objects you want spring to manage. So when you want a specific object to be managed by spring, you just put that object into spring's context. And this way you allow spring to manage it and you allow spring to augment it in specific ways with different capabilities you wish. Usually we have to configure that and we configure that with annotations nowadays. In the past we were using XML files and XML configurations and we were telling Spring how to use our objects, how to, um, how to control them and how, what to augment them with in terms of capabilities. So we were telling Spring and we are telling Spring now with annotations, please uh, please use a transaction, use this method in a transaction, wrap this method in a transaction or uh, apply this authorization configuration to this method of this specific object. But mind that again, Spring doesn't know to control any object. Uh, it can't know which is your object unless you tell Spring which is your object. And you tell Spring which is your object by putting that into the Spring's context. So what's the link between dependency injection and the Spring's context? So first of all, you need to put some objects into the context. And I hope now that the reason is clear, that it's clear why you need to do that. So you need to do that because you want Spring to be able to augment it with capabilities, because that's the main reason you use an application uh, framework. The, you, you wouldn't use an application framework otherwise uh, if it doesn't provide you capabilities out of the box that you use without needing you to implement them. So you need to use this context and to place your objects there. Now, it, the, the, uh, the other thing is how can you get them back? Of course, you get them from the context, you can explicitly get them programmatically. For example, in case of the context in Spring, you call the get bin, uh, uh, the, the get bin method and you get a specific reference and that reference can be or not augmented by Spring, but you might uh, also just tell Spring in these specific fields or in these specific parameters, give me some values that you have. And this is of course a nicer way and an easier way to refer to objects that you've previously given to Spring to augment and now you want to get them and use them wherever you need them. And that's dependency injection. So dependency injection is that implementation over the inversion of control principle, which allows you to easily get a value that you previously provided to your application framework to augment it with specific capabilities by just telling your framework now that you want to use a specific value in a field or a parameter. And of course, I won't write some code in this video because you already have a full playlist of Spring where you can see me using AutoWire and dependency injection with Spring. But when you use dependency injection with Spring, you just tell Spring, give me one of those values I've previously told you about and that you augment with specific capabilities so I can use it now. And of course, this is an easier way to refer to the objects you've given to your framework to use them uh, afterwards when writing your business logic. So that's why you use dependency injection. Well, when you would use when you'd write the same thing without using an application framework such as Spring or something else, because this is anyway working mostly the same in any any kind of framework and Java related framework, especially that we are discussing here. Uh, I'm referring to Spring because your question was about Spring, but what I tell you now is merely generally available for any kind of framework in Java. Um, when you implement your code without any framework, you have to first of all 
manage the object yourself, which means that if you want the same object to be used in specific places of your application, it is your duty to implement your class design in such a way in which you can use that object in those specific places and then you have to implement specific design patterns. Say the easiest one, you want to implement a singleton, you still have to write the code for the singleton class, isn't it? So you don't only write your object as you do now with Spring, you also have to write the getInstance method, you ha have to write depending on the way you choose to implement your singleton an inner class uh, to hold your singleton instance. So all that code, that's now boilerplate code. You don't have to write it anymore. So you don't have to write specifically for each object the way in which you want to manage its life cycle because the framework is also doing that for you. So that's a second uh, thing that comes out of the box with dependency injection is that now not only that uh, you can easily get objects that you previously told Spring you want it to uh, augment with specific capabilities, but you also get rid of the boilerplate code that was implementing the specific code for your class design for a specific design pattern uh, so that you can use that object wherever you'd like in the way you'd like. So you leave also the lifecycle management to be the framework's business. And that's first of all, that first of all allows you to uh, get the objects and work work easy with the framework where you have to give give your framework some objects to augment with capabilities and then you can get them wherever you want and secondly it allows you to write less code and with less written code of course your application is less error prone so you uh, and you write the code faster because once you write less code you also write it faster uh, and your application becomes also more testable because you don't have to test everything that's in the framework itself. You already re rely on the framework to have uh, code that's properly working and that has been tested by those smart guys who created the framework and you only have to test your specific code. So you see how many advantages you get by using dependency injection with your application framework. It's uh, a way in which you get rid of a lot of code that relies to um, object creation and object management. And this integrates really nice with the application framework itself, which in turn provides you nice capabilities you use in your application. I hope I have answered your question. Of course, this is this is can be a long discussion, so uh, it's not an answer. When you are in a technical interview, trust me, don't think of a technical interview as, as being a question answer kind of thing. It's a discussion kind of thing. A, a really good technical interview, it's where the interviewer discusses with the interviewee uh, with uh, um, some specific topics and uh, it doesn't, the, usually the interviewer doesn't have to expect a specific answer for a question because sometimes, like in the case of the dependency injection, is more as of a discussion than only one answer that you can, gi you, you can give. Thank you very much for uh, asking your question and I hope my answer or my discussion will uh, help you further and I'm looking forward for your other questions. Stay tuned.